Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the mental health and personality factors that may be at work in the life and death of John Candy? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll talk about the background of John Candy, and then I'll move to my analysis. John Candy was born in Newmarket, Ontario, Canada, on October 31, 1950, Halloween Day. He was raised Roman Catholic and would remain Catholic his entire life. His father died at age 35 when Candy was only five years old. His father died of a heart attack. Candy attended Catholic High School in Toronto, where he was an offensive tackle on the football team. He had hopes someday of being a professional football player. A knee injury while playing high school football would eliminate that possibility. He studied journalism at one college and transferred to another. While there, he took an interest in theater. His first acting role was a play in 1971. In 1973, he guest starred on a television series which was made for children. He would go on to have several minor and supporting roles in various television shows throughout the early and mid-1970s. None of those really contributed too much to his fame. His first major gain in popularity was because he became a member of the Second City in Toronto and appeared on Second City Television. This was an improvisational theater. Many comedians and comedic actors would get their start on one of the Second City operations, including Dan Aykroyd, Eugene Levy, Bill Murray, Steve Carell, Mike Myers, John Belushi, Chris Farley, and Amy Poehler. John Candy married in 1979. He would have two children. He worked on Second City Television for several years and was featured in a number of movies like the 1980 film The Blues Brothers and the 1981 movie Stripes. He hosted Saturday Night Live just one time in 1983. Candy was generally well regarded for his work on television, but he wouldn't really achieve fame for his work in the movies until the 1984 movie Splash was released. After this, he continued to be featured in a number of movies, including Armed and Dangerous in 1986 and Spaceballs in 1987, one of my favorite movies. Also in 1987, he starred in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, which was one of his more successful films. Through the late 1980s and early 90s, he continued to enjoy moderate success he had a cameo appearance in the 1990 film Home Alone and starred in Only the Lonely in 1991, a movie that did not perform well at the box office, but it was actually not a bad movie. Two of his more successful movies from that time would have been Rookie of the Year and Cool Runnings, both released in 1993. In March of 1994, John Candy was filming the movie Wagons East in Durango, Mexico. Other people on the set noticed they looked tired. He didn't seem to be feeling too well. On March 4, 1994, just a few hours after being in a scene in that movie, John Candy was found dead. He was 43 years old. No autopsy was performed, but many run under the assumption that he died from a myocardial infarction, a heart attack. He had a number of risk factors, including weighing somewhere around 275 pounds for much of his adult life, a family history of heart disease. As I mentioned, his father died from a heart attack, and Candy also used substances. Now moving to my analysis. John Candy had a number of habits and conditions that may have contributed to a challenging life and ultimately to his death, including binge eating and obesity. He struggled with his weight for many years and endured a great deal of ridicule. People were quite cruel to John Candy people in the film industry, and people on television. They used his weight as an object of humor, but he didn't find it funny at all. It really hurt him deeply. Candy also used substances, including a tremendous amount of alcohol. He was described as a heavy drinker. He started smoking at age 18 and would regularly smoke a pack of cigarettes each day. He would occasionally use other drugs as well, including cocaine. He discontinued his use of illegal drugs long before his death, but he had used them for so many years, it seems reasonable to believe they had caused some damage. In addition to weight and substance use problems, 
Candy faced a number of other challenges. He did not handle criticisms about his weight very well. As I mentioned, he was described as insecure and sensitive on this topic. He hired a personal trainer and would try to eat healthy foods, but he would always slide back into bad habits. So this cycle formed where he would attempt to overcome his challenges and he would have this setback and this would affect his mentality. This would affect his resolve to continue on and try again. So a lot of shame and guilt and this cycle that just keeps repeating. We see this several times in his life. Candy was greatly affected by the death of John Belushi in March of 1982. John Belushi was a hero to John Candy, and the number of parallels between Belushi's lifestyle and his own were not lost on Candy. Belushi's death was a wake-up call. This is when Candy stopped using cocaine, but it's also when he fell into a depressive state that was so intense he wouldn't leave his residence and would not answer the phone. I find the impact of John Belushi on John Candy as interesting because Belushi was also a role model for Chris Farley, who died at the same age as Belushi, 33 years old. John Candy suffered from depression and severe anxiety. By age 40, he was having panic attacks and sought the help of a mental health professional. His weight increased from 275 to 330 pounds. Some of his anxiety may be attributable to his response to criticism. Again, much of the criticism directed at Candy was not reasonable. It was based on his weight. So, again, we see a lot of people being quite insensitive. And on top of that, Candy was reacting to this criticism in a very negative way. Candy was also self-critical. When he would watch his own movies, he was his own worst critic. He would see all his flaws. He was judgmental of his own performance. He would see all the opportunities where other people could make fun of him. He would get intimidated and have to discontinue watching. Some believe that his substance use was a way to cope with this anxiety. John Candy discussed his anxiety openly in interviews, which was encouraging to many other people who had anxiety. All these factors, obesity, substance use, anxiety, depression, the fact that he was unfairly criticized, all these things came together to put him under tremendous stress. Despite these obstacles, John Candy was a productive and entertaining actor. He was also a businessman. Specifically, he owned a minority share in a Canadian football team for a while. He prioritized his family. He loved animals. He was always rescuing animals. And he donated to many charities. Let's take a look at his potential personality profile. When I conceptualize personality, I often use the five-factor model. I remember the five factors through the acronym OCEAN. Openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. We see that John Candy was high in openness to experience. He was creative, intellectually curious, and adventurous, although he was also traditional. And that's associated with being a little bit lower on openness. We see mid-range conscientiousness. He was impulsive, but he had a good work ethic. So we see both high and low facets. John Candy appeared to be extroverted. He was outgoing and friendly, but he did not necessarily appear to have a lot of positive emotions. It's hard to tell when somebody is using substances what their true emotions are in terms of positive or negative. Candy's level of agreeableness was high. He was altruistic, modest, straightforward, and trusting. And we see his level of neuroticism was high. He was vulnerable, anxious, depressed, and had difficulty resisting temptation. Many premature celebrity deaths stem from overindulgence. Actors get too much money and too much fame too quickly. Candy seemed to have a slower progression in his career. Like there wasn't one moment where he just skyrocketed to fame and lost all control. Although he did indicate he got into drugs after joining the Second City. So that was a big shift for him in terms of his behavior, being around those people and in that environment. We see the introduction of illegal drugs into his life. Even still, it seems as though his bad habits are more tied to anxiety and depression as opposed to a nosedive into hedonism. I don't think he was overwhelmed by the celebrity lifestyle in the way that we usually see with these tragic stories. I think it's more likely that his mental health factors were simply exacerbated 
by the stress that he was under. Anxiety is challenging enough on its own, but when it's combined with the pressure to perform at a high level, it becomes unbearable. Candy's way of dealing with the anxiety was through substance use and food consumption. If somebody suffers from substance use problems, for better or for worse, there are a lot of celebrities they can identify with. We see that a lot of people in Hollywood suffer from substance use problems. For people who have anxiety and panic, there really aren't that many celebrities who they could look at and say, hey, that person suffers from something that I can relate to. John Candy is one of the relatively few who openly discussed it. Candy fought against his anxiety. He tried many times to stop using substances and to lose weight. He did have a number of successes, and he never completely gave up. In the end, however, he had just too many setbacks. He lost ground too many times. His life and death are both a source of encouragement and a cautionary tale. The last area I want to talk about are the anomalies that occurred in John Candy's career. Some of them were just bad luck, and others he contributed to. Some people look at John Candy and think that even though he was famous, he was really a much better actor than he was given credit for. So how did this happen? Why didn't he really get a massive break and go on to an incredibly high level of fame? I think part of it could be explained by these anomalies I'll talk about. Here are a few examples. John Candy only hosted Saturday Night Live one time on October 22, 1983. The musical guest was Men at Work. It was reported that he was considered many other times to be the host, but they went with somebody else. So John Candy really didn't get the number of times as the host of Saturday Night Live, as did other people who were his contemporaries, right? So for his level of fame, he should have hosted probably three, four, or five times during his career, and instead we just see this one time. He was also considered for the cast of SNL, but turned it down to stay on Second City TV. The next item would be what happened with the movie Ghostbusters. This movie was a massive success. It helped the careers of everybody who starred in it. Candy was offered the role of Louis Tully, the nerd who became the key master. Even though Candy was already well known, this role would have really increased his popularity. When Candy read the script, he didn't understand it. He couldn't get his head around how to play the character. He told the director that he could play the role as a German guy who had a bunch of German shepherd dogs. The director passed because he didn't think this idea made any sense, and Rick Moranis was selected for that part. Rick Moranis did a great job in this role, but I'm curious as to how John Candy would have performed. I think he would have really brought something original and interesting to that character as well. The last career anomaly had to do with his final film, Wagons East. This was the movie he was working on when he died, as I mentioned. It was completed after his death and released. Sometimes movies like this do okay, even if they're not great, because of the attention that the death of the celebrity brings to the film. So the critics maybe take it easy a little bit and point out some of the strong features of the actor or actress who passed away. And we see that people will go and see it in the theater to support a beloved actor or actress who died. This was not the case with Wagons East. It was a major flop at the box office. It only earned $4.4 million. In addition, it was not well received by the critics. Just to give a few examples of actors who died tragically and had their last film well regarded, we see Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight was a great movie. Paul Walker in The Fast and Furious 7. The movie wasn't too good, but it was all right, and I think it, again, attracted more attention because of Paul Walker's death. And Brandon Lee and The Crow. The Crow was an okay movie, but again, we see the attention because Brandon Lee died. And I think, in particular, the fact that he was shot on the set, and that's what caused his death, that really led to a lot of attention. John Candy would get no such honor. It's a shame that Wagons East would be his final film, an ignominious end to an otherwise great career. Despite this, John Candy brought joy to millions of moviegoers and television viewers over the course of many years. He was, I think, one of the great comedic actors, and there's a lot that can be learned from his life. 
what can be done right to advance a career, and areas to be avoided, like addictive type behaviors. Those are my thoughts on John Candy. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.